Welcome back to the Freedom Works. My name's Jamin, and I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about deaf with science. Science you can believe. Maybe. Sounds cool. Doesn't work. Frozen deaf. Crystals. Limp mode. Tune it out of your life. Delete the entire system. You've been warned. Big picture. Diesel creates emissions. One of them is NOx. NOx causes acid rain and smog. Allegedly. Deaf reduces those NOx emissions. The end. Almost. DEF is short for diesel exhaust fluid. You hear that fluid? It's a solution of urea and deionized water that you can buy at the pump or in a plastic bag inside of a cardboard box with a questionable carbon footprint. DEF is injected into a diesel exhaust system to reduce NOx. If you live in a metric country, you might refer to DEF as AdBlue or AUS32, but it's all different names for the same stuff. Kinda. Is this shirt? Purple? I'm fairly certain this is a blue shirt, but it sure looks purple on my monitor. Trigger warning, I'm gonna say no less than 14 times in this video. And I know your mother-in-law says it's a bad word, but it's in the King James Version of the Bible. If it's okay with King Jimmy, it's okay with me. Moving on. Now you can argue about whether Knox or any other emissions actually matter down in the comments section, but regardless of how you feel about the topic, DEF does actually reduce the amount of Knox coming out of your 10 inch tip by a lot. DEF systems have been failing and falling off of light duty diesel trucks in the US since 2010. And regardless of what all of those clickbait lube tube videos are telling you, they aren't going away. So you might as well understand what that Smurf pee is doing to your truck and your wallet. And yes, I know the EPA made a big announcement on July 29th, 2025. And it sounded like winning the lottery for diesel enthusiasts, but unfortunately the proposed new regulations won't result in EGR, DPF, or DEF going away. Probably. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like a video on what might actually change. I actually know a guy that has nearly 20 years of experience interpreting and enforcing federal laws related to energy and the environment. Anyway, we should probably get back to DEF. So let me feed this controversial information to you in three easy installments. First, I'm going to explain to you how a DEF system actually works when it works. Second, I'll discuss common DEF system issues and third, I'll tell you steps that you can take to ensure that you never have deaf issues 60% of the time. Every time. So grab a cold snack, go take a deaf, and let's talk about one of the most troublesome systems on a modern diesel truck. But first, let's talk about deaf and cat dog my smells like the asparagus I ate 30 minutes ago. Well, that's basically what deaf is. Deaf is 32.5% urea mixed with deionized water. Human otherwise known as urine, is only about 2% urea. So DEF is basically race bits. Like, all I've consumed in the last 48 hours is Red Bull, Wild Turkey, and Moscow Mules. And speaking of animals, the Australian hopping mouse has the highest urine urea concentration of any mammal at around 25%. So technically, if you could wrangle enough hopping mice and get them to piss in a cup, you'd have a decent DEF substitute. Not saying that you should do it, but you'd have a better shot at hopping mouse working than your flaccid 2% pee. But if you have a good I pissed in my death tank story, please grace us with your presence down in the comment section. Before we go any further, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark. That's why I have this shark, it's a visual dad joke. Surfshark VPN is an app or browser extension that encrypts your internet connection and masks your location. It's like the blurry face covering and the very wide voice changer thingy before your interweb connection. This thing working? When I'm researching these videos, Surfshark encrypts my data and masks or even changes my location by routing my electrons through any of their 3200 plus server locations. I can research efficient tuning and reliable exhaust components sold in Canada without worrying if Big Brother is watching over my shoulder. Plus, if I'm trading stocks or buying truck parts on some questionable Wi-Fi at the Waffle House or Tammy's Taco and Tobacco Emporium down on County Road 12, I know that Surfshark is keeping my credit card and financial data encrypted and secure. I actually use Surfshark One, which bundles VPN, antivirus, data breach alerts, and private search engine all into one package. Surfshark's private search provides unbiased search results. The first time I sharked myself, that sounds kind of weird, I found out that I'm quite infamous on the Bob is the Oil Guy forum. I wasted 38 minutes of my life reading some flattering but mostly derogatory posts about my intelligence. Thanks for that reality check, Surfshark. Click on my link in the description or go to surfshark.com slash freedomworks or use code freedomworks at checkout to get four extra months of Surfshark VPN. You can use Surfshark on an unlimited number of devices and it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So click on my link to see everything that Surfshark has to offer. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Now back to diesel science. All right. Let's start with the basics. 
Here is a typical light duty diesel emission system in the US in 2025. A modern diesel after treatment system consists of an EGR, DOC, DPF, and SCR. With the exception of the EGR, these are all different types of catalytic converters that each converts a different harmful substance into an arguably less harmful substance. They're all filled with precious metal catalysts that make them valuable to your local tweaker. A catalyst is simply a substance that lowers the temperature or energy required for a reaction to occur. Without catalysts, the exhaust gas temperatures wouldn't be hot enough for the reactions to happen. It's science. Let's start at the front and work backwards. Exhaust gas recirculation, or EGR, lowers combustion temps and reduces NOx. Go watch this video for the entire story. It's linked in the description. The diesel oxidation catalyst and DPF work together to capture solid carbon, known as soot, which causes cancer, maybe, and burn it into gaseous CO2, which causes climate change, allegedly. Go watch this video for the entire story. Link in the description. And finally, diesel exhaust fluid, or DEF, and the Selective Catalyst Reduction System, or SCR, the topic of this video. People just say DEF, but in reality, DEF is just a fluid that allows the SCR system to do its job, which is converting NOx into nitrogen, which actually makes up the majority of the Earth's atmosphere. I use the words DEF, DEF system, and SCR interchangeably, but technically, we're talking about SCR. And, by the way, this is DEF, not DPF fluid. This has nothing to do with your DPF. Also, I agree, there is no place in an engine for except maybe the coolant system, which is why this stuff goes in the exhaust system. It never gets anywhere near the engine. So, how did we get here? Starting in 2007, NOx and particulate matter requirements started getting really tight for diesels. It's a complex rule. There was math based on vehicle cells and phases of the moon, but basically, things started happening really quickly in 2007 0.5 and 2008 model years. Ford, Dodge, and GM diesels all got DPFs, and Cummins finally switched from internal EGR to external EGR, just like everybody else. But in 2011, Ford and GM needed to add DEF, SCR, to meet the tightening requirements. In 2013, Cummins added DEF and still needed to lie to meet the standards. But they have paid their dues to the tune of $1.7 billion to the US government. Long story long, EGR reduced NOx, but not enough to meet the tightening standards. So, everyone started supplementing EGR with DEF. It's basically the belt and suspenders methodology. But wait, there's more. DEF wasn't just about meeting emission standards. It was also about power and efficiency. OEMs really had to neuter these engines to meet the standards with EGR alone. Go watch the EGR video to understand that completely. But with DEF, Engineers could tune for maximum power and efficiency in the combustion chamber and then clean up the mess in the exhaust. We're talking 5 to 10% better fuel economy and way more power potential. DEF has allowed many modern diesels to make more torque than a 1990s engine that's twice their size. Legally. Unless you're Cummins. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. I'm allowed to make fun of Cummins. I own two of them. And FYI, Scania uses only DEF without EGR on some of their engines, which allegedly meet emissions requirements. The only downside of those is they use about twice as much DEF. Fun. Okay, how does this DEF magic actually work? When your exhaust gases hit about three to 400 degrees freedom, the DEF gets injected into the exhaust stream through a nozzle right about here. The heat breaks down the urea into ammonia and isocyanic acid, which enters the SCR, reacts with the catalyst inside, and exits as nitrogen and water vapor. Science. Here's the simplified reaction for all you freaks that actually understand chemistry. Now, the truck isn't just constantly dumping DEF into the exhaust. That would waste your money and piss you off. The ECU is constantly calculating how much DEF to inject by monitoring upstream NOx levels, exhaust temperature, engine load, RPM, and about 1,776 other parameters to determine exactly how much DEF to inject. Light crews on the highway, minimal DEF usage. Pulling a trailer up a mountain pass, all the DEF. The system works whenever exhaust temps are above about 300 degrees freedom. Below that, it would literally be pissing in the wind. The ECU knows this and adjusts accordingly, sometimes using more EGR at low loads when SCR isn't happy than switching to SCR dominance when things heat up. When everything's working right, this approach can reduce NOx emissions by up to 95%. That's why your 2010 plus diesel can make 400 plus horsepower and still meet emission standards, saving the planet one truck at a time for the low, low price of $100,000 hairs. What a bargain. But, and that's a J-Lo size but, 
This system is more finicky than a supermodel on a juice cleanse, and when it breaks, it breaks hard. Which brings us to part two, deaf issues. <sighs> Where do we start? Money. Well, honestly, all of these issues involve money, but even if nothing goes wrong, <laughs> yeah, right. The truck still costs more to purchase and operate. Quick math, 15,000 miles per year, 15 miles per gallon, so that's 1,000 gallons. You burn about 3% as much DEF as fuel, so that's 30 gallons of DEF at $5 per gallon, so that's $150 a year to save the world. Allegedly. Is that math legitimate? Let me know in the comments. I've never had a truck with DEF, so I'm kind of relying on the books and the interweb here. Okay, let's get to the actual issues. Limp mode, DEF crystallization, frozen DEF, bad DEF, failed parts, limp noodle, and carbon footprint. Did I mention limp mode? Okay, limp mode. Here's the EPA's nuclear option. If your SCR system wigs out because of a bad part, bad DEF, low DEF, or low T, your truck will gradually reduce power and speed until you're getting passed by stock 7.3 liter power stroke and 12 valve Cummins trucks. That's embarrassing. Now, Here's something that might come as a surprise to you, but the EPA doesn't require OEMs to use a DEF system to meet emission standards. But if an OEM chooses to use a DEF system, the EPA does require them to implement a very specific limp mode strategy for low DEF, bad DEF, or basically any other system fault or indication of inadequate DEF supply or effectiveness. Limp mode for the win, DEF crystallization. When DEF gets hot and sits around, the urea turns into crystals. Not like a diamond, but more like a kidney stone that your DEF injector can't pass. And limp mode, frozen DEF. DEF freezes at about 12 degrees freedom. But wait, you say, the system has heaters. And yes, it does, when they work. But those heaters fail, and suddenly, your DEF tank is a big blue popsicle. Now the system can't function, codes start flying, and you're looking for a tow truck on New Year's Eve. Or limp mode. Bad DEF, not all DEF is created equal. Cheap DEF from questionable sources can have impurities like metal particles or bacon bits that don't play well with pumps and injectors. But if it's in a box, in a big box store, you're probably pretty safe. If you're buying it at the pump with a fuel station with very high turnover, also probably okay. But if you're buying it from a bootlegger in the Waffle House parking lot, all bets are off. And here's the kicker, DEF has an expiration date. Leave it sitting in your tank for too long, especially in hot climates, and it starts breaking down. Leave it in a box in the back of your truck in Odessa, Texas for two years, it starts breaking down. Your truck's computer is smart enough to know when you're running bad DEF, and guess what? Limp mode. Okay, failed parts, sensors, pump, injector, and the SER itself, they're all potential failure points. Knock sensor gets knocked off by an armored possum, limp mode. DEF quality sensor catches a kidney stone or an STD, limp mode. DEF pump spins a rod bearing, limp mode. Temperature sensor drifts out of range and limp mode. Every additional part is a potential failure point and the EPA requires your truck to go into limp mode if any one of them breaks or has a brain fart. Lucky you. Carbon footprint. I get lots of comments about carbon footprint. People just don't realize they're talking about carbon footprint. So I'll try to explain it. Carbon footprint means the total amount of greenhouse gases, including carbon dioxide and other gases like methane, generated by our actions either directly or indirectly. Or, in layman's terms, as it relates to DEF, does the production, distribution, consumption, and disposal of everything associated with implementing DEF systems on diesels actually produce more or less pollution overall? And that's a great question. And I don't have an answer, or at least an answer that all of you will believe, because numbers do lie and science is dumb, AI said so. Okay, enough doomsday diesel talk. Let's talk about how to keep your DEF system slightly less unreliable. That's possible. It's possible. First rule of DEF club, use good DEF. Buy your DEF from reputable sources. Truck stops, auto parts stores, big box stores. If I needed DEF, I'd buy it at Bucky's. They have awesome burritos and I'd rather use a Bucky's bathroom than the one in my own house. If you've ever downloaded out of Bucky's, you know what I'm talking about. So skip the DEF pump at JoJo's Pistol Pawn and Petroleum Station and just go to Bucky's. Beaver nugs. I love beaver. Look for the API certification on the box. That's your guarantee that it meets the specs. And check those expiration dates. DEF typically has a shelf life of about two years in a climate controlled area. One year in hot storage and six to 12 months in your truck's tank, depending on the temp. So if you buy DEF in the box, keep it cool, keep it sealed, and keep it in the shade. Sun turns DEF into blue cottage cheese, which I like, but your truck doesn't. And if you buy it in bulk, rotate your stock. First in, first out, just like your beer fridge. Top it off. 
Here's a pro tip according to the interweb. Keep the tank over one quarter full. When the tank gets low, agitation from driving can cause aeration in the depth. Those tiny air bubbles can make their way to a sensor, and guess what? Limp mode. Drive your junk. Hard. Your SCR system needs to get hot to work properly. If you're just putting around town at low speeds, the system never reaches optimal operating temperature. So the depth just sits stagnant in the lines, pump, and injectors. It starts crystallizing, and guess what? Limp mode. So take your truck on the highway regularly. I'm talking 20 to 30 minutes at highway speeds. Let the exhaust system get hot enough to do its job. You gotta get those juices flowing. It's like taking your dog for a walk. After a few minutes, they start walking funny. Things start moving through the system, and the next thing you know, you're carrying a bag of dog through the neighborhood. How do we get to this? Here's your sign. Unlike your wife, your truck will usually tell you when something's wrong. Def consumption increases drastically for no reason. Something's not right. It could be over-injecting or leaking. Weird smells from your exhaust? Be a man. Ignore it. Just kidding. A strong ammonia smell could mean you're injecting too much DEF or your SCR catalyst is starting to fail. Check engine lights, get it diagnosed immediately. Don't just clear the code and hope it goes away. Well, maybe clear it once. What's the worst that could happen? Modern scan tools can show DEF system data in real time. You can monitor your NOx sensor readings, DEF injection rates, and system temperatures for abnormalities. Catch problems early and you might fix them with a $200 sensor instead of a $2,000 catalyst. I personally keep an extra mediocre scan tool in my truck all the time anyway, because I drive old junk. Preventive maintenance. Follow the maintenance schedule religiously. Some trucks need DEF filter changes every 50,000 miles. Others need periodic system cleaning to prevent crystallization buildup. Don't skip these. They're way cheaper than major repairs. Probably. There are also DEF system additives like this new one from Hot Shot Secret that can dissolve crystals, lubricate the system, and stabilize the DEF itself. So if you're having issues or aren't putting a lot of hard miles on your rig, something like this might be worth your while. PSA, don't have a brain fart and pour this into your fuel tank. DEF and this additive are intended for your exhaust system, not your engine. And finally, the one you've all been waiting for, tuning. The kind of tuning that ensures you never get a check engine light or limp mode due to your DEF system. The kind of tuning you get when you only drive your truck in Mexico or on non-public roads and closed courses not subject to the rule of law. <laughs> You can also go hit big potholes in the Waffle House parking lot until all this crap falls off if you want to shed some pounds, but unlike a DPF, the hardware doesn't have to disappear in a boating accident for the tuning to be effective. And finally, again, because I can't count, just be poor or frugal like myself and maintain an entire fleet of pre-emissions dinosaurs and never worry about emissions equipment again. You'll fix everything else on the truck twice, but never a DEF system. It's a good time. So let's wrap this up. In conclusion, DEF, which has a questionable carbon footprint, drastically reduces NOx, which allegedly contributes to climate change, which saves you and the unicorns while simultaneously costing you dozens of hours of downtime and thousands of extra dollars when purchasing, operating, and maintaining your diesel truck or equipment. It's expensive. It's troublesome. It's questionably beneficial to mankind, and it's probably not going away. Ever. So let's just keep complaining about it together in the comment section like one big dysfunctional family. It's the American way. If you've made it this far, please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons, leave a comment on a video topic you'd like to see, and share this video with your know-it-all brother-in-law. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay curious.